Antarctica, the icy continent with its picturesque landscape, awesome environment and harsh climate, is undoubtedly the most inhospitable and inaccessible continent of our earth. Antarctica is also a vast storehouse of 90% of the world's freshwater resources locked in the form of snow and ice. Perpetual blizzards lash the coastal areas with speeds as high as 300 km per hour, tearing the shelters to shreds, exposing the expeditioners to vagaries of wind chill and cold injuries. The sub-zero temperatures dipping as low as minus 89 degrees centigrade call for strong human endurance. The mountains in the interior parts rise up to 3,000 meters above sea level and offer an enchanting view of the landscape. About 120 million years ago, India and Antarctica along with Australia, South America and Africa were part of a supercontinent Gondwana land. The process of crustal deformation broke apart these land masses and allowed them to drift to their present locations. Around 350 BC, Aristotle predicted a landmass in the southern hemisphere to counter the weight of the continents in the north and named this Anti-Arctic or Antarctic. Ever since then, man tried in vain to prove the existence of Antarctica till Bellingshuizen and Lazarev sighted the continent in the year 1820. Early adventurists braved the fury of the southern seas in small wooden ships which, like paper boats, were often tossed and smashed by strong waves. The modern motorized vessels, though mightier and stronger, have still to face the roaring forties. Huge waves rising to tens of meters tilt the ships dangerously, throwing men and material out of gear. sunshine or snowstorm, the operations must go on as expeditions are required to adhere to strict time schedules. As the ship crosses 50 degrees latitude, expeditioners are rewarded by eye-catching, tranquil views of icebergs of various sizes and shapes. The sheer size and majestic beauty of the icebergs leave an everlasting imprint on the mind. Moving in the frozen sea and wading its way through the pack ice, ships are anchored at the temporary birthing sites. The penguins, inhabitants of Antarctica, welcome the expeditioners. The geologists, however, must leave the comfort of the ships 
and move from ice shelf to polar plateau, passing through Shermakar Oasis, Nunataks, and mountains in his pursuit for collecting data on rocks. The Geological Survey of India has the proud privilege of mapping Gruber, Humboldt and Orvin mountain chains in central droning Maud land of Antarctica, covering an area about 16,000 square kilometers. Penguins, the native birds of Antarctica, cluster in rookeries along the coastline. Out of several species, Adelie and Emperor penguins are the most commonly seen penguins. Crab eater seals bask in the sun on the fast ice. Skua, a flesh eating scavenger ringed by Indian zoologists, are among the other forms of life in Antarctica. Scientists keen to study nature must stay outdoors in tents. GSI scientists face the maximum blunt of outdoor exposure because of the nature of their work. They have to be self-sufficient in the field and must manage their logistics apart from taking strenuous traverses in the mountains. Okay. Indian Antarctic expeditions are multidisciplinary and multi-institutional in nature. There are more than 50 institutions, laboratories and defense establishments participating in the National Antarctic Program, coordinated by National Center for Antarctic and Ocean Research of the Department of Ocean Development. Among many such organizations, mention may be made of Geological Survey of India, Indian Institute of Geomagnetism, National Geophysical Research Laboratory, India Meteorological Department, Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleobotany, Botanical Survey of India, Zoological Survey of India, Defence Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences and National Physical Laboratory. Modern satellite and radio communication systems help the expeditioners to keep in touch with the mainland. Scientific tasks cannot be accomplished without a dedicated logistic support. Helicopter operations are a major lifeline of expeditions. The choppers are put into action even when the ship is still in pack ice. The underslung operations in strong Antarctic winds are no easy job. Helicopters also provide logistic support for various scientific programs. With the onset of winter, the ice surface becomes more compact, facilitating movement of vehicles. During winters, when there are no air operations, 
surface convoys play an important role. Regular convoys of snow vehicles run between Maitri and the coast to fetch foodstuff, machinery and other equipment. Vehicle breakdowns or accidents often take place, demanding a lot of man hours and physical endurance on part of the logistic personnel. The set of winter is heralded by the appearance of greasy surface on water. Soon this water turns to frozen surface. The time for the ship to leave for the mainland has come. A small team of Antarcticans is left behind to carry on the tasks. While continuing the scientific experiments in the dark polar winter, the winter team has tremendous task of maintaining the research station. These jobs include housekeeping, generating electricity, maintaining water supply and keeping oneself fit. While performing the outdoor jobs during blizzards and extreme cold, a slight negligence may invite cold injuries including frostbites. Fire is another big enemy. Working in the dark is indeed a tough task. The darkness must yield to sunshine. Maitri has a new look washed and swept clean by snow. Spectacular auroral displays. Convoys during the polar night. Indeed, a unique experience. Indian venture into Antarctica commenced in 1981 when a small team of veteran scientists with Z.A. Kazim as leader landed on the Antarctic shelf on 8th January 1982, thereby joining a select group of nations participating in scientific pursuits at Antarctica. India built its first permanent research base on the ice shelf in 1983 and named it Dakshin Gangotri. India was soon rewarded with consultative status in the International Antarctic Forum. By 1989, the snow accumulation had taken its toll burying the Dakshin Gangotri station nearly completely. The station had to be decommissioned. A new research base, Maitri, came into being on ice-free area in Shkarmakar Oasis. Home to Indians since 1989, Maitri can boast of state-of-art living and laboratory amenities. In the same year, India set up another field camp at Filchner Ice Shelf off Weddell Sea. During the year-long stay, members celebrate all the national functions. Three young scientists of GSI and a naval technician sacrificed their lives in pursuit of science in the 9th Antarctic Expedition. On 8th January every year, Antarcticans pay their homage to V. K. Srivastava, B. L. Sharma, A. K. Bedi and N. Joshi, the heroes of Antarctica. Adventure, courage, determination and the scientific spirit. These words aptly sum up 
इंडिया मिशन एट अंटार्कटिका